Ordo Virtutum Latin for Order of the Virtues is an allegorical morality play, or liturgical drama, by St. Hildegard, composed c. 1151, during the construction and relocation of her abbey at Rupertsburg. It is the earliest morality play by more than a century, and the only medieval musical drama to survive with an attribution for both the text and the music. A short version of Ordo Virtutum without music appears at the end of Scivia's, Hildegard's most famous account of her visions. It is also included in some manuscripts of the Symphonia Armoniae Celestium Revelationum, Symphony of the Harmony of Celestial Revelations, a cycle of more than 70 liturgical songs. It may have been performed by the convent nuns at the dedication of the St. Rupertsburg Church in 1152 or possibly before the Mass for the consecration of virgins at the convent. Plot The subject of the play is typical for a musical drama. It shows no biblical events, no depiction of a saint's life, and no miracles. Instead, Ordo Virtutum is about the struggle for a human soul, or anima, between the virtues and the devil. The idea that Hildegard is trying to develop in Ordo Virtutum is the reconnection between the creator and creation. The piece can be divided as follows, Part 1, prologue in which the virtues are introduced to the patriarchs and prophets who marvel at the virtues. Part 2, we hear the complaints of souls that are imprisoned in bodies. The, for now, happy soul enters and her voice contrasts with the unhappy souls. However, the soul is too eager to skip life and go straight to heaven. When the virtues tell her that she has to live first, the devil seduces her away to worldly things. Part 3, the virtues take turns identifying and describing themselves while the devil occasionally interrupts and expresses opposing views and insults. This is the longest section by far and, although devoid of drama or plot, the musical elements of this section make it stand out. Part 4, the soul returns, repentant. Once the virtues have accepted her back, they turn on the devil, whom they bind. Together they conquer the devil and then God is praised. Part 5, a procession of all the characters. Topic. Roles The soul female voice. The virtues sung by 17 solo female voices, humility, queen of the virtues, hope, chastity, innocence, contempt of the world, celestial love, discipline, the name is scratched out in the manuscript, modesty, mercy, victory, discretion, patience, knowledge of God, charity, fear of God, obedience, and faith. These virtues were seen as role models for the women of the Abbey, who took joy in overcoming their weaknesses and defeating the devil in their own lives. Chorus of the Prophets and Patriarchs sung by a male chorus Chorus of Souls sung by a women's chorus The Devil a male voice, the devil does not sing, he only yells or grunts, according to Hildegard, he cannot produce divine harmony. Topic. Background The meaning and emphasis of the Ordo Virtutum in Hildegard of Bingen's community is affected by which persons in the community played which roles, and how they related to each other at the time of the performance. It has been suggested that the soul represents Richardes von Stade, Hildegard's friend and fellow nun, who had left to become abbess of another convent. Hildegard was upset by this appointment and tried to have it revoked, appealing even to Pope Eugene III. However, Hildegard was unsuccessful and Richardes departed, only to die shortly thereafter on October 29, 1151. Other scholarship propose an allusion to Hildegard's brother Bruno. Before dying Richardes told her brother that she wanted to return to Hildegard, not unlike the returning, repentant soul of Ordo Virtutum. The title of the piece is called Ordo Virtutum, which is typically translated to virtue play. Many people are not aware that Ordo Virtutum's translation from Latin actually serves as a double meaning can also be translated to rules by which the world works. Citation needed. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Composition. Hildegard of Bingen was never classically trained in composition, nor was she trained to play instruments. She was self-taught although not in a way that many people would expect. Her whole life Hildegard of Bingen claimed to be both clairvoyant and clairaudient. The music came to her in her trances and that is how she was able to compose that many pieces without any formal training. 
She also attempted to describe what she was going through in her works such as Ordo Virtutum. Life in the Abbey The performance of music of any kind in the abbeys of the medieval era would be a cause for celebration. The majority of the life of nuns would have been lead without speaking due to their vow of silence. The sisters dedicate their lives to poverty and would not indulge in human wants. The lives of women in this life would have been dedicated to the service of their community and God the Father. Speaking any idle words would have been seen as offensive. The performance of Ordo Virtutum would be a chance to use the human voice as a vessel for praise. The play was seen as a spiritual celebration and the joy of overcoming human weakness. A moment of religious celebration, at the consecration of an abbey, would have allowed the women to enjoy the joy of music while still worshipping God. The healing properties In addition to the use of the human voice as a vessel for praise, it was found that music and rhythm had healing properties and could be used for good. Hildegard of Bingen believed that music had a direct correlation with the opening of dysanesthesia, which is also known as the third state of consciousness. Music was used as a way to enlighten yourself and bring joy and positivity into your soul. It was a type of meditation that promoted relaxation. The manner in which this was practiced highly resembles the way Buddhist meditation techniques are performed. Up until 2015 neurologist Oliver Sacks was researching Hildegard's 12th century belief that music can bring a whole brain connection between the two hemispheres, to heal and calm the body. <laughs> <laughs> Musical elements Ordo Virtutum is written in dramatic verse and contains 82 different melodies, which are set more syllabically than Hildegard's liturgical songs. All parts are sung in plainchant except that of the devil. There is an alternation between solo and chorus parts as well as melismatic versus syllabic lines. The main acts in the play are set in allegorical towers and the musical dimensions are driven by the architectural understanding, for example, the development of processional chants that link the action in one tower to that of the other. The final verses of the play move into a mystical mode and describe the crucifixion of Christ, asking the audience to bend their knees so that God may stretch out his hand to you. Genua vestra ad patrim vestrum flectite, ut vobis manum swam porigat, pp. 36-37. The final word, porigat, stretch out, is set to 39 notes, it is the longest melisma in the play. It is meant to illustrate the stretch of a divine hand toward humanity. Topic additions Pitra, Jean-Baptiste François, ed., 1882. Ordo Virtutum. Analecta Sancte Hildegardis, Opera Spicilegio Celesmensi Parata. Analecta Sacra Spicilegio Solsmens in Latin, 8. Paris, A. Juby and Roger pp. 457-465. OCLC 633575447. Dronk, Peter, ed. 1970. Ordo Virtutum. Poetic Individuality in the Middle Ages, New Departures in Poetry 1000-1150 in Latin 1st ed., Oxford Clarendon Press. OCLC 807267992, Dronk, Peter, ed., 1986. Ordo Virtutum. Poetic Individuality in the Middle Ages, New Departures in Poetry 1000-1150. Westfield Publications in Medieval Studies in Latin, 1 2nd ed. Westfield College University of London Committee for Medieval Studies. pp. 180-192. ISBN 978-1-870059-00-8. OCLC 715235014. Fice, Hugh, Evans, Christopher Francis, Keenzel, Beverly Main, Musig, Carolyn Ann, Newman, Barbara Jane, Dronk, Peter, eds. 2007. Ordo Virtutum. Opera Minora I Corpus Christianorum Continuatio Medievalis in Latin, 226. Breppels. pp. 505-521. ISBN 978-2-503-05261-8. OCLC 
Topic: Translations. Dronk, Peter, ed. March 2008. Ordo Virtutum. The Play of the Virtues. Nine Medieval Latin Plays. Cambridge Medieval Classics in Latin and English. One. Cambridge University Press. pp. 147 to 184. ISBN 9780521727655. OCLC 190,967,426. Ordo Virtutum, The Play About the Virtues. PDF. Translated by Linda Marie Zayer. Boise State University, English Department. The 29th of May 2013. Retrieved the 15th of January 2018. Topic. Performing edition Davidson, Audrey Ekdahl, ed. 1985. Hildegard von Bingen, Ordo Virtutum musical score in Latin and English. Kalamazoo, Western Michigan University, Medieval Institute Publications. ISBN 978-0-918720-62-7. OCLC 729364408. Musical edition Ricosa, Luca Basilio, ed. 2013. Hildegard von Bingen, Ordo Virtutum, musical score in original notation in Latin and French, first ed. Geneva, Lulu. OCLC 985,455,640, second, corrected ed. The 4th of September 2014. Topic: <laughs> Recordings. Sequentia. Hildegard von Bingen, Ordo Virtutum. LP, Deutsche Harmonia Mundi 20.395, 96, CD, CDs 7492498, MC, 77051 4, RG. Includes translation by Peter Dronk. Vox Anime. Hildegard von Bingen, Ordo Virtutum. CD, etc. Record Company BVKTC 1203 1995. Includes translation by Ansi Boothroyd and Michael Fields. Sequentia. Hildegard von Bingen, Ordo Virtutum. CD, Deutsche Harmonia Mundi 05472 77394 2 1997. Includes translation by Peter Dronk. Vox Anime. Hildegard von Bingen in Portrait. Double DVD, BBC, Opusarte OA 0874D 2003. Includes Hildegard, dramatized BBC documentary starring Patricia Routledge, a real mystic, interview and lecture with Professor Michael Fox, a source of inspiration, Washington National Cathedral documentary on her life and times, illuminations, art gallery of her mystic visions with comments by Professor Michael Fox. Translation of Ordo Virtutum by Ansi Boothroyd and Michael Fields. See also Canticles of Ecstasy Notes <inaudible> <inaudible>